Uh, I'm Andrew Coy with the Digital Harbor Foundation. The publicly funded, uh, the modern education system was designed and created during the industrial era. Educational institutions, however, existed before then, of course, but they are always for the elite, the wealthy, the ruling class. This changed, however, with the explosion of mass production, mass transportation, and mass communication, that when they gave birth to a new set of societal needs. The industrial machine and its essential counterpart, the bureaucratic organization, relied on reading, writing, and arith arithmetic. Without those skills, the system would have collapsed. And so the modern public education system was created, a place that was for mass instruction, a place where experts well-versed in the decreed standards uh, transfer that knowledge to the next generation. It was modeled after the factory, and as is often painfully apparent, even looks like it. <laughs> Factories and schools can be hard to tell apart. It was also, however, a place that was designed to be separate from real world work. The factory was an incredibly dangerous place. Limbs and lives were all too common casualties, and, no school, and so school became a place to keep kids safe which meant, in reality, making it removed from the real world. Worksheets were safe, workbenches were not. The time has come, however, to rethink some of these basic assumptions and put the pieces back together in, in new and exciting ways. Schools need to be safe places, but instead of focusing on being safe from things, from danger, from work, they need to be focused on being safe for things, for creativity, for authentic engagement, and for application. We need to think about how we can use all of the insight we have about learning to reimagine the formal structures of the process. Schools do not have a monopoly on it. It can happen any time, but they do have the market cornered. It only counts when they say it counts. Learning takes a lot of time. One study looked at the best of the best violinists and found that on average, these maestros had 10,000 hours of focused violin practice by the time they were 20. 10,000 hours. How many credit hours is that? I did the math. If you had 90 minutes of class a day plus an hour of homework, it would take you more than 22 school years to get to 10,000 hours. If you add an after school in summertime though, I can get that number down to six. Many people wonder why there aren't enough tech professionals. There are plenty of jobs out there and they pay enough, so why don't more kids learn these skills? The problem is not one of supply, or not one of demand, but of supply. In other words, I don't know if the school system, as currently designed and implemented, can, of its own, solve the systemic shortage. I do not think the problem is at all insurmountable, though, and in fact, I'm very encouraged by what I see and experience every day. Regardless of where or how these changes happen, I believe three components are laying the foundation for the work ahead. On-demand, just-in-time access. The internet changed the rules of cre by creating a way for rapid access to information. When youth today carry the sum of human knowledge in their pockets, then why do we force them to memorize facts? In other words, it is far more important in the information age that you know how to access information than that you know a specific thing. And even more important, that you know how to learn new things. What is still needed, however, is the creation of an improved structure to organize that content and help youth find their way through it all. Real world public facing portfolios. Although students sometimes have difficulty articulating this fact, the artificial nature of made up schoolwork is far less intrinsically motivating than real life. Students know that when they post something publicly online, lots of people will see it. When they turn something in at school, however, uh, often only one person sees it. Youth want and need to solve real world problems. And a link to a GitHub account, for example, is far more informative to a potential employer than an SAT score or one's GPA. Youth want to solve these problems, and they want to engage authentically with the world around them. We need to give them that opportunity. The internet was built by people who never went to school to learn how to build the internet. The process of discovery and wonder cannot be dictated or controlled by a system. Forcing it simply will kill the passion that should accompany it. Formal support for informal learning. Discovery can and must be fostered. Learning how to do this effectively is not easy, but it can be done, and it is essential for any innovative economy to do so. We need to think deeply about how to formally support informal learning and recognize the enormous value derived from learning that happens outside of a mandated system. We need to think about how that work can be supported and encouraged and how it can be accessible to more than just the well-to-do. The modern education system, publicly funded and compulsory, was designed to solve the human capital needs of an industrial economy. The question before us now is whether that system can be rethought and remain to meet the needs of an innovative economy. I believe we can and know that we must. 
Too many lives, dreams, and hopes depend on our ability to do so. An effectual struggle remains, but if we are fully committed to the cause, we'll figure it out. Thank you.